Hiya folks, welcome back. So today I wanted to take a look into something that I've been hearing a lot of whispers about and that is, can disabling multi-thread on your processor improve performance in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020? So I figured why not just find out and I'll take you all along for the ride. Uh, now this could be a very big pile of nothing sitting here recording this audio. I don't know what the results are going to be, but in any case, uh, we'll let the numbers speak for themselves as always and I'll try and add a little bit of context as we go. So first up, we need to have a little bit of a talk about multi-threading or SMT as it's sometimes called. That stands for simultaneous multi-threading. Now in general, uh, for every physical core on your CPU, you get two logical cores known as threads. So on my eight core 5800X3D processor, by default, I have 16 threads. Interestingly, I think the new Intel chips are doing away with multi-threading, so that's gonna be a new thing over there. Uh, now there's been all sorts of arguments made that by disabling multi-threading, uh, just giving you a total of eight cores and eight threads, it can yield better performance. You should be able to disable SMT in your BIOS. Uh, how you do this will vary uh, by motherboard manufacturer and do it at your own risk. You know, you're messing with fairly low level system settings here. So only do it if you feel comfortable doing so. And no, I can't offer you any tech support. So let's dive in. Now for context, my system specs are an AMD 5800X3D, an NVIDIA 4080 Super running with 32 gig of DDR4, 3600 CL16 memory from Corsair, and the SIM is running on a four terabyte Western Digital SN850X SSD, and all the recording is taking place on a separate recording PC, so there's no recording overhead on my SIM PC. So on the left we have multi-threading enabled and on the right we have it turned off and we're coming into land at Heathrow Airport on runway 09 left. This is Heathrow from Innybuilds and we're in the PMDG 737-800 and all the landings you're going to see today were set up for us by FSI panel. Another thing to take note of is that we're running NVIDIA frame generation. Now the Sims built in FPS counter which is at the bottom left there it can't count the frames that NVIDIA generates. Uh, so we're also running MSI Afterburner, which are the figures you can see kind of in the top middle there on each section, and that can detect the additional frames generated by NVIDIA. So what's going on? Well, looking at the averages, with SMT disabled on the right-hand side, we're about two to three FPS up, but on the 1% and 0.1% lows, we're actually one FPS or so lower. Note how as we touch down here, uh, yeah, there's a bit of a stutter here as we come into Heathrow. The averages, though, remain higher. And as we roll down the runway, you can see the 1% low start to climb up with the uh, SMT disabled. Though, you know, after that big stutter, both of the 0.1% lows are pretty much done for at this point. I mean, it's, it's a small win for SMT being turned off, um, but I think we can probably say that's a bit of a win regardless. Now, this landing in both cases, both for SMT on and off, this was the first landing that I did in the sim after booting it. So what if we got FSI panel to set us up for a second landing? Would things be different? So catching up here on short final. And yeah, look at that. If I think, you know, any which way you slice it, that is a much clearer win for multi-threading being turned off. It's interesting how neither system got that stutter on touchdown either that we saw in the first landing. I wonder whether that's because maybe some stuff has been cached after that first landing. I don't know. The higher percent, 1% lows, um, in any case, is something I would gladly take. Because, of course, it's not really the average FPS you want to be looking at so much. It's the lows that give a much clearer picture of what's actually going on. And it's when you get the, the low lows, that's kind of when you get a choppy sim. So I would definitely take the higher numbers that we're seeing here. Let's move on up to Edinburgh. Now this is version 2 of the Edinburgh scenery from Pirigi, which is a highly detailed piece of scenery and I'd urge you to check it out if you haven't already. It's brilliant. Um, but it's a bit of a mixed bag here as we come into Edinburgh as from a little way out from the airport it's looking good for the SMT off but then as we get nearer it does start to struggle. Keep an eye on the 1% lows, it drops away massively. Um, the 0.1% lows remain higher which is good. Um, as you can see now, once we're touched down, the 1% lows seem higher with multi-threading enabled. And finally, to wrap things up, I wanted to try a default airport. So we're headed down to Nuki in Cornwall to see what's what. And if you look at the numbers here, they're very, very similar. Perhaps the lack of difference is due to default airports being much lighter on your system. Therefore, you're not going to expose any cracks in the system versus what we just saw at the two handcrafted airports at Heathrow and Edinburgh. Uh, you know, what we're dealing with here is a very small difference either way. So, yeah, that's kind of margin of error stuff, run-to-run -run variance. So I think we can probably call it a tie here at Nuki. 
So there you have it. It's a bit of a mixed set of results. Heathrow, we had a small win with multi-threading off. Um, Edinburgh, I thought we were going to be on to a winner, um, quite a large winner, actually. But then it kind of struggled the closer we got to the airport. And Newquay, which is a default airport, there really wasn't much difference at all. Now, the other thing we've got to consider is the nature of the sim. It's, uh, it's quite temperamental, I think it's fair to say. What works well on one day might not work so well on the next. So I think for me, I'm going to try this... Um, for a little bit and see how it goes over a longer period of time. Also, you need to remember, if you're playing other games on your system, they might actually really benefit a ton from SMT being enabled. So you might decide that rather than turning it on, turning it off in your BIOS every time, you might as well just not bother with this and leave it turned on. That's totally valid. Also, um, keep in mind that Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 is almost here, and with its alleged multi-threading built in, you're probably going to want all the threads that you can get in any case. So, um, Again, when you get to 24, this whole thing might be just not a conversation worth having. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, maybe you've tried this already. Let us know how you got on. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, don't forget, leaving a like really helps the video and the channel if you found this video in any way useful and get subbed so you don't miss out on any future content. But I'm going to leave this one here. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. And as always, happy flying.